Greetings and salutations to all you folks out there. I'm Brink, and you're listening to the Voice of Insanity today, bringing you an opinion about a strategy game. We're going to talk about Nightside. This was at one point a green light project on Steam. It moved through its beta phase, and now it is in full release. Has been for a little bit over a month. We're going to take a little walk through this game and see what it has to offer. It was developed by Omni Dreams Creative, and I can't give you a backlog of their games because this is their very first one. Um, as far as RTS games go, this gives off a command and conquer type vibe. I don't think anywhere in it it specifically says it's a retro RTS, but that's what it feels like to me. I like the music, I like the graphical design, the aesthetics of the game. Um, it it feels cool to play. I know that's a very vague statement, but I like the looks of it and that feel. If you're into those older RTSs, this is going to be a cool little fit for you. As far as content goes, um, story mode versus AI and multiplayer, pretty standard for strategy games nowadays. I got to tell you right off the bat though, multiplayer is pretty much dead. I've been on several days um, at, at different times and I can never find anyone else on. So if you want to play with people, you can bring a buddy along or two or three buddies. You can do up to a two versus two. Um, or you can bring along a partner to do versus AI. Any way you really want to do it. The story missions, I'm not going to do any of those. Um, I played several of them. It took me a few hours to get through about half of them. So there's a fair bit of content there. And it's actually pretty hard on the higher difficulties. There is a little bit of a challenge there. So if you like story modes in your RTSs, there's not really any plot. There's no cohesive story structure, but there are a lot of different missions in there for you to play. We're going to dive into the versus AI here and uh, just see what kind of factions this game has to offer and then see a little bit of the gameplay. We've got Nova, YX, Human, and Nox. Nox, the fourth faction, was added just a week or so ago in a free update for the game. That is one thing I do have to say. The developers for this game seem to be very tied in with the community. They respond on the forum. They have been adding and patching things religiously as far as things that people have asked for or critical pieces that were missing. So they are active as far as that goes. And I would take that into consideration as we're looking through this game. There's a lot of polishing that needs to be done that we'll talk about, but the developers do seem willing to do it they haven't abandoned this game like a lot of indie developers do where they just cough something up and then after you pay for it you're stuck with it so nova and human are pretty much basic base builders um, if you've played any kind of strategy game before this is going to be familiar territory you construct your buildings you use them to build your units you collect your resources and you steamroll the other people YX and Nox, on the other hand, are a very interesting implementation of an alternate economy. And we'll look at that because I'm actually going to play as YX um, just so you can see how that works. Basically, you have cells or nuclei um, that combine or morph into other units. You just produce a steady stream of these little building blocks and then combine them into what else you need. It's a really innovative way to look at it, and it's pretty well implemented. So it's just kind of one of those unique things. All four factions play drastically differently, but the disadvantage is that they have low unit counts. So you're going to get your um, varied content from the different play styles of each of the four factions, and not because they have enough units to pull off different strategies within the factions themselves. Let's go ahead and dump another AI into here. We're going to set him on Nova. I'm going to take YX and we're going to set him to let's do hard. So he'll carry my butt to victory while I'm talking and distracted and not really accomplishing anything much. We're going to put the other AI on human and leave him on easy. All right. Let's go ahead and jump into this. As you can see, there's six um, larger two versus two maps. And then there's about the same amount, a couple more two verse or one versus one so there's a reasonable amount of maps to play on as far as the overall feel you get when playing this game i love how it looks you're on the dark side of the moon and so the fog of war is actually one of the best implementations that i've seen there's a certain amount of suspension of disbelief when you're playing rts games because you have to take for granted the fact that there's radar and then you're tanks can't see something that's literally 50 feet in front of them because there's this thing called vision radius well 
In this game, not so much. There's no radar. Your only means of seeing the map is actually putting a unit over at that location. Your units give off light and that lights up the terrain for you to see. Once you leave an area, the terrain is no longer marked. So you, if you lose vision, you have no intel whatsoever. It's gone. Um, it plays really, really well. When I first started, it kind of feels like falling around in the dark and it's slightly frustrating, but once you get used to it, it makes a lot of sense and you basically have to build up a good network of recon um, so that you can maintain sight on different groups of units and you just have to be quick on your toes responding to things. Now, with the overall looks of the game, you also got to take sound into consideration, and I do like the soundtrack on this one. Uh, everything works together pretty well as a whole, and I think it all fits together quite brilliantly. Before we talk about the units specifically, how to use them, and how this game plays out, let's talk a little bit about the user interface, because in my opinion at least, user interface makes and breaks strategy games. The ease with which you can interact with the game and make units do what you want them to will pretty much determine how much enjoyment you get out of the game, how much fun you can have. The UI is functional, it is adequate, but there's some pretty gaping holes in some of the functionality. Um, it controls like a Command and Conquer or StarCraft game. Um, you build your factories for the other factions. This is the one exception. Um, you have a five unit queue, which is non-repeating, so you have to hotkey your factories and be ready to cycle through units. Not my favorite thing ever, but it does work as it's intended to. Um, and all of that stuff comes together as a whole. Your hotkeys function, um, your factory selection tab through, all that kind of stuff is fine. One of the problems that I had with unit selection is the fact that there is no select units in camera or select global units hotkey. You have to actually click this button over here, select all army, and I find myself clicking it constantly. And it is annoying not to have that available on a hotkey. One of the other things that's missing from your hotkey list is the camera controls. Now the camera works pretty dang well for a game like this. I have no problem at all clicking and dragging with the scroll set up high, you can get around the map reasonably well. No big dealio. Or you can click around on the mini map like you can on pretty much any RTS game ever and instantly move to the view that you want. There's no hotkey for your preferred camera views though. You can't save a camera view on your base on an outlying army, that kind of thing. You actually have to click around. I don't know if that's intended as part of the darkness theme and trying to suppress any of your um, you know, overlying intel, but it's highly annoying to play with. And that's one thing, if I had to pick two things to be added to the hotkey list, it would be cameras and the all unit select. And that would make things so, so much easier. As far as the economy goes on this game, it is a free-flowing economy. You've got no limitations on the amount of resources on the map. You have crystal extractors that you position around the map, and I feel like that was very, very well done on this game. Um, you have locations spread around where you can't turtle. There is no turtle mechanism on this game, period. It is all you know, all out warfare. You don't, uh, you don't sit around the base at all. Um, well, like I'm doing, <laughs> but I have an excuse because I'm talking. Um, the crystal extractors are spread out enough that they force expansion. And there is only the one resource, so you're not going to have to worry about managing a whole bunch of different stuff. It's fairly simplistic, but it works, so simplicity is not necessarily a bad thing. I'm going to use an attack move order there. As far as the rest of the user interface goes, um, obviously you can attack move, regular move orders, that kind of thing. One problem that I did have while I was doing this, a couple of the factions have movable factories and motherships. Um, well, actually all the motherships, masterminds, whatever, um, are movable, but the default order is a move order and not the place rally point. So you run into a situation where if you just click when you're trying to get units to go somewhere, your mastermind will actually move out from behind your fortifications and potentially into danger. You actually have to use the hotkey to set a rally point every single time, which you can create a habit for, 
but overall is very frustrating to deal with on those times that you uh, you forget and then you end up with your vital unit that if it dies you're gonna lose the game just wandering out into combat so that's kind of another thing that I would swap around or clean up with your economy it it works as it's supposed to but one thing that I did notice is that there's no ability to reclaim, to demolish, to scrap buildings, um, sell them. There's a lot of different terminology that goes into them, and it's there's no way to do it. And in rare occasions, that can lead to a situation where if all of your extractors get destroyed and you don't have any resources to build another extractor, you end up completely and totally dead in the water. There is no way to recover at that point. And I only hit that point once, but it was like a punch in the gut. Maybe it's a brutal, harsh reminder that you have to maintain your economy, but it seems a little bit unforgiving and like that functionality should be in there somewhere. For overall gameplay, if you like the StarCraft or Command and Conquer style of game, this is more than adequate and it is going to feel like home to you. If you don't like the older style of RTS game, then you're going to miss your strategic zoom, some of the higher end functionality and ease of use uh, in the user interface that comes with some of those games. So that's just something to bear in mind. That'll roll me directly into my final thoughts on this. As you'll notice, there's a lot of complaints that I had as far as the spit and polish, specifically with the user interface. The user interface is a bit hard to get along with. Um, but it's, I think some of that can go back to trying to imitate some of the older RTS games. And in the end, whether or not you get this game should be determined by what type of strategy game you like to play. Um, if you like story modes, if you like versus AI, if you just want something that you can sit down and piddle around with, you will get 15, 20, maybe 25 hours of enjoyment out of this. And if you're okay with that, then by all means purchase this game. It's fairly well put together and it does seem like the developers are still actively working on it. So there's probably gonna be a lot more ironing out of the wrinkles as time goes by. However, if you're looking for a more modern feel, a large scale RTS with a lot of the easier user interface options and that kind of thing, I would probably stay away from this one. You're not going to get as much enjoyment out of it. You're gonna wear it out very, very quickly. So that's kind of where I would end at. It's a good fit for some people and not for others. Depending on what type of strategy game you like, this could be an awesome or it could be a terrible game. So just bear that in mind as you're looking at it. Alrighty guys, I think that is going to wrap up everything I need to say about this game. If you like the review, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. And I would appreciate your constructive criticism on this one. Stepping back from the reviewing light and into the channel light, this is the first review that I have done on a strategy game. I need your constructive criticism on what I can change, what information I'm missing, what you think I should look into more. Um, how I can conduct these better to get information out to you guys that is actually useful in your decisions on what types of games to pick up. I am planning on pursuing this. I like strategy games. I love the genre. It is my favorite by far. And I'd like to give you guys a better idea of what's going on with the new games that are being released. I'm going to be doing one more review of, to be quite honest, a terrible game. Um, <laughs> but uh, I'm going to get that review out there anyway. And uh, I, I'd just love to hear your thoughts on it. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching and supporting the channel. And I will see you in the next video.